internet friends. Welcome to another episode of the Synergy Cafe online show featuring speaker, entertainer, close-up illusionist, and marketing alchemist, Magic Brad. It's the internet lifestyle show about career, finance, relationships, spirituality, and wellness. We're moving the online chatter over to real life activity. And now, please welcome your host of Synergy Cafe, Magic Brad. Hey, Internet friends, Magic Brad here, Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative, and doing a spontaneous interview. This one wasn't even scheduled, it just kind of popped into the cosmos. And here's my new friend, Paul. He's down in South, on, in, in Dallas, I think. Houston, Texas. Houston. What's the difference? <laughs> Dallas, Houston. I have about four hours. Oh, okay. No big deal. <laughs> Still cowboy hat, right? Right, right. Yeah. No, you know, uh, you would think we're, we're not so. Uh, uh, I don't know. Not that many people actually do it, I guess. Uh, the cowboy hat's much. Not that there. Western. My, my niece lives down in Austin, so she's not wearing a cowboy hat. More like a rainbow T-shirt. Yeah, it seems like uh, Austin's <laughs> the place to be weird. <laughs> so um, I just saw one of your Facebook Live videos, and I thought we'd connect and talk about the concept of magic and spirituality, and that may be down the road. We'll touch a little bit on it and about what you do and things like that. But first, we want to get to know you. Getting to know you. Are you married? Got kids? What's going on? You got a pet? I, uh, I'm single, uh, 40 years old, uh, been traveling around the world for about 15 years. Um, I've been a busker, uh, a street performer all over the planet, as well as working for casinos and cruise ships uh, as a magician, a hypnotist and mentalist. I bend forks and I was uh, featured in Ripley's Believe It or Not in one of their books called uh, Expect the Unexpected. So I don't you- believe it. That's not <laughs> and I'm going to grab the book. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I have a DVD that came out with a company called Magic Makers, uh, which is called Mentally Hypnosis, which is a beginner's uh, guide, if you will, on mentalism and hypnosis effects. So you kind of so sum that all up about who you are and what you do all in one little thing. Um, so, And then one of my questions is where do you work? And it sounds like you work wherever they'll hire you or whatever you can make a buck, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm a traveler. Uh, I mean, as of recently, the last three or four months, uh, I've relocated again back into Houston. Um, and so I'm just now kind of creating roots again and, and connecting with all the Houston magicians that I haven't seen in a long time. And because uh, I used to live out here when I was 28 years old. And I think that's when I got my real, I guess, uh, commercial start. It's the first time I made it onto television, uh, uh, Channel 11 News. And uh, I was doing a lot of like interviews and stuff like that in the Houston area. And then I went to New York and in New York, I, uh, I went for these two world records with uh, David Adamovich, whose name is uh, a Throdini, the great Throdini. He's a knife thrower, uh, has, I don't know, 13 or 14 world records, probably more than that now. At one point, he was having a, a, a kind of discussion with the Guinness Book of Records. They didn't want to give him a certain record. So he went off and created a thing called um, a Record Holders Republic. And so that's become its own thing and its own website. And I'm on there uh, as having the fastest straight jacket escape uh, by a man at, uh, I believe it was 10, 10 seconds, 10.59 seconds or something like that. Oh, and, seeking uh, fame, trying to get their position. Yeah, I was, I was going at it whichever way I could. Uh, I was, uh, yeah, I was 28, and I was like, I'm going for it. I'm in New York. Well, uh, so I, I had an off Broadway show as well, uh, off off Broadway in Greenwich Village, uh, called The Psychic, which was a kind of a weird. It's about my life, but not really. Uh, trying to confuse the audience into believing that I'm a psychic through the. Uh, whole show and at the end abruptly ending the show and asking the audience if they saw a psychic or if they just saw somebody who was pretending to be a psychic and uh, talking about the belief of whether uh, what you come in with and has it changed have you been have you questioned anything that I've done tonight as being maybe something other than uh, a trick and uh, so it was it was a it was a fun little ending and it was weird and it, it got people off guard and they didn't know what was – how did this – this went from a one-man show to this kind of dissertation. On let's, something uh, else. let's touch yeah. on that a little bit. Now, we, we kind of know who you are, where you live. In case you're lying to us, we can come beat you up or whatever. We know, who, we know how to find you. Uh-huh. Not right. You get on a plane, take off to Cuba or something. Can't, right. can't catch a busker. <laughs> yeah. like but, catch me if you can. But know. on the topic of like spiritual – like reality and fantasy – 
Um, I do a, a little thing all the time. I talk about it. It's perception because some people think, well, that's fake. Well, is it really? And uh, the little demo I do is with my fingers like this. Is this fingers are the two the same size from your point of view? Right. And from my point of view, this one actually looks like it's longer than that one. Isn't that weird? Right, right. It's Magic. Good. Sleight of hand. But we get into that a lot because I'm a magician and I understand a lot of this stuff that is trickery. Yet I've experienced some bizarre things. And then you try and figure out, is it real? My wife is a shaman, so we get into it sometimes. Is it real or is it trickery? And uh, being trained as you and I are, we can sometimes see the trickery, whereas if you cannot see it, it looks like it's a miracle, or something miraculous or something supernatural, when maybe it's not. But I still believe in the possibility of some of that stuff. You know, you saw the movie Matrix, right? Sure, sure. Yeah, I, I, I myself, uh, I, so I, I studied to be a rabbi for one year in Israel, in the old city of Jerusalem, uh, with a, a group called Aish HaTorah. So I got really involved in the spiritual aspect of things and the real uh, nitty gritty. I, I tend to take all the information that I learn and always uh, look at it a, in the most uh, base form of what it is. And so I got into the Kabbalah, into the Zohar, and really reading and understanding the is it real, is it not real conceptual idea. And, you know, after everything that I've gone through, and I've passed away once, I've passed away twice on top of that, I consider passing it away twice on top of that, uh, using ayahuasca and DMT. So I've experienced these very psychedelic realms and come back home to speak about it, if you will. And uh, and at the same time, uh, being a magician, I'm a super skeptic on whether I'm psychic or I have some kind of um, uh, uh, unknowing knowing, which I on some level really believe in because I, I constantly talk about this idea of faith based life where you just allow it to occur and yeah. you live within it. And, uh, and, and you do your best to implement the best you can upon it, but, you know, know that you have no control. Know that you have you have absolutely no knowing when it's going to end. Even that is an interesting topic. I, I'd like to do a – I don't want to do this one too long because it's just kind of get to know you kind of thing. Then I'm going to pop it out to the internet. But I'd like to do more of these because that is really interesting in that, like, first you have to define what is reality. Is reality – are we in a trance in waking life because we are in that routine and the dream life is reality people got to define what is reality well if, if you pinch me i can feel it but that doesn't mean it's reality you know you got to agree to not to agree to disagree well, but agree I mean, that reality is reality yeah i think we get to that place when you ask that question what is real uh, the answer is nothing is real i i did this just the other day i did this on one of my uh, posts and i said if you think about it if you get to the beginning of at the beginning of everything, right, the beginning of the Big Bang, prior to the moment of the Big Bang, what's there? Nothing, and nothing in essence is everything. So everything is nothing, and we're everything is nothing. Nothing creates everything. So that means we're living within a nothing that is everything, and what we create is the everything. Right. So we are that beautiful, intrinsic, awesome thing that is the creation of everything, and we make whatever it is that we want in our mind, a la Napoleon Hill what your mind can conceive, your body can achieve. Yep. And so it's that that kind of, when you understand it like that, it makes it that much better. It makes it so much more uh, open instead of this closed in place where I can't control anything and everything's on top of me. Instead, it's this much more broad, open, anything is possible at any moment. Well, there's uh, the, the two schools of thought. Are you creating your own life or are you living your destiny that was created by the creator? Whereas uh, there's, I, I, li I read the Bible a little bit. The scripture in the Bible says, you too will do greater miracles than I. So we sort of have the same powers. If God created us in his image or right. its image, then we can do that too. So right. are we creating our own reality or are we falling into the path that's been pre-created for us? Do right. Yeah, I think that's, a, that, that's the next question. Am I, do I have free will? And, you know, I think the answer to free will in itself is that you do and you don't. Uh, you are and you aren't. Yeah. That's the dualistic thing that makes life so beautiful is that on some level we're only alive because uh, something's thinking about me. So I'm, I'm being thought of and therefore I am. 
Because without that thing, whatever you want to call that thing, without it turning my light switch on, I'm not on in the morning. I'm not here anymore. Right. So, but at the same time, I still believe, I believe that I have some free will, you know, to have this conversation with you and to use this conversation to help grow the consciousness, not of myself, not of just yourself, but of everyone who watches and everybody who gets involved, they go, oh yeah, this isn't such a, a tumultuous, painful experience. Instead, it's this awesome experience where I can go out into the world and now effectively make someone else happy. I can be somebody's flower that they smell. Uh, I can be the 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 image that that makes them go, oh, dude, really, it is possible. I mean, right. this guy's been homeless on the streets. This guy's been, ah, oh, this guy can't be that guy. He's how can he be so happy? How can he was homeless on the street for thirty five days and wrote about it? What he's crazy. Why would he do that? Right. And it's right. it's you know their experiences almost like um. Shia LaBeouf, as of recently in life, he's been doing these experiments in which he's just like exercising an idea of connecting with people. And so one of his concepts was um, uh, take me anywhere, hashtag take me anywhere. And so people would uh, find his uh, locator and they would go find him and say, hey, I want to take you. And he would be like, OK. And him and his two other uh, people, uh, his two other art uh, uh, uh it's a little group. Uh, so it's LaBeouf, Ronco, and Turner, I think, are the three artists. And so they, they would then jump into somebody's car and travel for as long as that person would take them to wherever that person wanted to take them. And they traveled all over the United States and ended up in Alaska over a one-month period. And they recorded the entire thing and put it up on social media, and people were making their own YouTube videos, and it, it became its own community. And it's cool. this, and I was just taught, this is what I was talking about today. It's amazing how we have technology, how we can do what we're doing right now. And so many people are playing a video game and so many people are wasting their time when they could be growing their mind. Sure. Um, well, we've gone up to 10 minutes, but let's close off with that. I, I, I totally, I want to do more of this kind of stuff because this is a, uh, this stuff can go on and on and on for hours. You know, the, the people that are watching their video games, maybe that's what they want to do. But yeah. are they conscious that there's more to it than a video game? But if they're having fun in the moment, what, what are they going to contribute to society, right? Who knows? They might break out of it and come up with a cure for insanity. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> there's always an outlier, man. Always so you, an outlier. You want to give us a little info about how to get a hold of you in case somebody does or to hire you or do you need that kind of stuff or what's that? Sure, I would. Sure, I, I'll take it. I, I never say no to free publicity. Uh, my name is Paul Carpenter. My website is Mentally HYP, stands for Mentally Hip. Uh, so uh, mentallyhip.com. You can just look up the at Mentally Hip on any social network from Instagram to Twitter to YouTube, uh, LinkedIn. It's all the same name. Uh, I've had it for about 10 or 15 years now. So uh, the whole thing came to me. Uh, I was around 28, met this other hypnotist. He goes, let's do a show together, Mentalism and Hypnosis Show. And I was like, I don't know if that would work. And we ended up tagging it Mentally Hip. He ended up uh, becoming a, a, a very awesome hypnotist here in the Houston area, having a great uh, uh, you know, um, company doing his own thing and helping a lot of people. And I went off and ran with Mentally Hip. And I've been doing a mixture of a mentalism and hypnosis show ever since. Cool. And cool. so, yeah, and so that's that's kind of what I've been doing. And uh, so that, that's how to find me, Mentally Hip, on the internet, uh, YouTube, Facebook, uh, all of that. Uh, right. I have I mean, a new YouTube channel, which is Paul David Carpenter. That's, I think, the only different. If uh, you will um, give me a couple of those links in the, in our Skype thing here, I will post those on this thing that I send out, and then I'll, I'll tag you in it also, and uh, we'll get it out to the cosmos, as they say. But let's do some more of these. Let's continue awesome. this. We're on the same time zone. On the same vibe, know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. One hundred percent, Brad. I love it. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you for having me. Okay. Thanks, Paul. Be well. All right. Bye bye.